Good morning, meteorologist Scott Fillier here with your Tropics Outlook and discussion for June 16th, 2021. We continue to track Invest 92L this morning in the southern part of the Gulf of Mexico, likely going to see a depression or tropical storm Claudette fall with this within the next 36 to 48 hours as it begins to lift towards the north. So all eyes on this system for unfortunately a soggy weekend setup for the northern Gulf Coast and a lot of details to talk about with regards to this system and the potential heavy rainfall threat it is going to bring for the northern Gulf Coast. So if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the video below as well as subscribing to my YouTube channel for hurricane season updates all season long. All right, let's make my camera a little bit smaller so you can see less of me and more of the infrared satellite depiction of our disturbance this morning and some telltale signs of a little bit more organization this morning with this system. Now, it is still very broad and kind of elliptical in nature. And I'll draw some things on the screen for you to make it a little bit more evident. This morning, we have a big blow up of storms north of the Yucatan. You can see the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico this morning and the Bay of Campeche. Well, throughout the past couple of days, we've had this fester uh, of a low level spin right near the southern part of the Bay of Campeche. This morning, if you look closely, look towards the west, see how these low level clouds are kind of streaming in from the northeast and then over here you've kind of got somewhat in the way of southwesterly winds. We're starting to see more of a broad elliptical area uh, of low pressure that is developing in the Bay of Campeche. Now I think throughout the day today, we're gonna to start to see a little bit more organization with this, nothing quick in fashion is going to develop when you've got this broad of a low level circulation. But I think with time, we're gonna to start to see some coalescing or congealing uh, of a more defined area of spin. And as this begins to lift to the north, as we go throughout the day tomorrow, and especially into late Thursday and Friday, we're going to see a depression or weak tropical storm develop. And it wouldn't surprise me to see this become a weak to moderate tropical storm before it makes a landfall on the northern Gulf Coast late Friday and into Saturday. Let me show you the latest from the National Hurricane Center. We're going to talk a lot about model output, wind shear, and kind of the overall ingredients for this system in just a moment. Here's the latest outlook from the National Hurricane Center. They're giving this a 70% chance now of development within the next uh, basically 48 hours, but a 90% chance now. Uh, I was at 80% last night if you watched my live YouTube. Now we've got a 90% chance of tropical development within the next three to five days. You can see kind of this cone, if you will, of uncertainty. This is likely what the track would look like, something like this with that cone of uncertainty stretching from uh, southeastern Texas to southeast Louisiana. This is one of those systems though that I caution you, do not look at the center line. If we do indeed see a depression or tropical storm form with this, of course, the center line is gonna draw your attention. That's not gonna be the story with this. This is going to be way less of a wind threat, although there could be some gusty winds of 35 to maybe 50 miles per hour along coastal Southeast Louisiana and certainly some coastal flooding with that persistent onshore southeasterly wind flow, this is not going to be a wind threat predominantly though. What we're going to be watching for is along that center line and east of where the center comes on shore, we're going to be talking about a heavy rainfall threat. And although I don't think everyone in that area that I just outlined in green is going to see some flash flooding, if we get some of those localized rain bands that set up east of the center, those are the spots that you could see the six to 10 inch rainfall amounts in a shorter window of time. And that would be the reason that you would wanna pay attention for a localized flash flood threat along and east of this system. Let's talk about some of the ingredients for this. Here's a look at our current vorticity map. This is our low level vorticity map. Uh, 850 to 925 millibars, so closer to the surface. 
And if you look at this, we've got a little bit of rotation now. That area that I outlined in the Southern Bay of Campeche becoming a little bit more evident on our vorticity map. And you know what's interesting about this? This area has a little bit less wind shear today than it did yesterday. It's been getting rocked with wind shear the past couple of days. But this morning, over that area that I just outlined, whoops, if I put this back, I'll draw this in pink to make it a little bit more evident for you. This area of spin right over the southern gulf is still being kind of battered by 15 to 20. You see those yellow lines, the yellow and green lines there? It's still battling 15 to 20 knots uh, of wind shear. And that is definitely enough wind shear that will inhibit any sort of quick organization with this as it begins to lift towards the north. Now, what's interesting though, again, this wind shear isn't really gonna go anywhere. Uh, it's gonna battle some wind shear 15 to 20 knots throughout its lifetime. And do you see the orientation? You see these wind barbs? They're in like this light orange. See them there? The wind shear is coming out of a westerly direction. And that's really critical because again, as this low starts to develop and it lifts towards the north, because you have this, uh, again, wind shear that is coming out, I'll put this back in black so you can see it. Whoops, maybe black isn't the right color. What about yellow? Let's put it in yellow. Again, with this wind shear that is coming out of the westerly direction, that's going to displace a lot of the thunderstorm action on the eastern side of this. So again, as the low lifts north, you want to follow that moisture field that's going to be heading towards the Gulf Coast somewhere from Louisiana to the Florida Panhandle. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. Westerly wind shear, that's going to make this kind of that classic lopsided looking mess of a tropical depression or storm with the main concern being the flash flood risk along and east of the center. Truth be told, I'm not overly worried about this system causing any significant impacts, but I think some localized hotspots are going to see six to 10 inches of rain. It's just about where those rain bands set up. We can handle three to five inches of rain over several hours time, but it's if that rain falls in a short period of time then it can cause the localized flash flood threat. All right, let's run through some of these model forecasts. I'll show you briefly the European and the GFS ensemble models. You can see, generally speaking, they take that track on the Euro towards parts of Southwest Louisiana. That would again put a lot of the rain east of the center from basically Acadiana to New Orleans towards the Mississippi and Alabama coastline. And on the GFS, similar story. All of our model runs keep this at tropical storm status or lower. Water temperatures are warm enough to support stronger than that, but because of the wind shear in place, I only think that maybe a 40 to 60 mile per hour tropical storm maximum is going to come of this, uh, but it could gain a little bit more intensity, you know, weak to moderate tropical storm uh, as it moves closer towards land. But again, the semantics there and the takeaway is that rain is the bigger concern. Let's look at the GFS forecast model because I do wanna talk timing here. And if you kind of fast forwarded to the video, here's your model section where we look at the model data. And again, here's a look at the GFS forecast model, the American based model starting the clock uh, as we go towards Thursday morning. So about 24 hours from now, we start to see that broad area of low pressure uh, in the southern part of the Gulf of Mexico, right about here. And look, look where most of the rough weather is located on the GFS forecast model. As I move this forward in time, we'll follow the low here. Notice the low starts to track up to the north and look where most of the heavy and rough weather is. This is Friday morning to midday, uh, right at about 10 a.m. on Friday. And I'll put that at the top of the screen. 10 a.m. on Friday, we start to see the low moving towards the north. Here's the low. Uh, but some of those rain bands already starting to move out ahead of our system because of the influence of some southwesterly uh, wind shear. So that's displacing the rough weather along and northeast of the center. So by 10 a.m. Friday, rain begins to move into coastal South Louisiana. And then notice landfall, this is Saturday morning, 
right near the Louisiana and Texas border with still uh, there is some rain wrapping into the western side, but a large chunk of these rain bands will be over here. All right, with that being said, as we go towards Saturday and into Sunday, the low doesn't move all that fast. Now, it doesn't look like it's going to stall, but it does look like it may slow down just a tad before finally going more towards the north and east. And with that, through Sunday, so again, Friday through Sunday, uh, it's going to be something to watch for along the Gulf Coast in this region, basically all the way from coastal southeast Texas, maybe even a little bit further west than that, all the way towards the Florida Panhandle for just a soggy Father's Day weekend forecast. Rainfall amounts, uh, official numbers from the Weather Prediction Center. You can see the winds 35 to 45 miles per hour generally uh, in gusts with this. Weather Prediction Center, they are showing anywhere from uh, four to six inches of rain, some localized higher amounts, and I'll, sh I'll refresh this. We just got this new update in from them. And you can see they are still showing some localized hotspots near eight inches of rain near Homa, eight inches of rain near Slidell, Waveland, and Bay St. Louis. So somewhere within this region that I'm highlighting in red, we'll likely see uh, anywhere from four to six inches likely, but some localized hotspots uh, of eight to 10 inches of rain will be possible. So again, have a way to receive weather alerts through the course of the weekend and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll have a lot more updates throughout the week. Until then, have a great rest of your Wednesday and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye y'all.